morning all. So, where am I at today? Well, in light of what's going on in the world with coronavirus and the likes, uh, I've decided to get out in the sticks a bit. So, I'm at Low Barns Nature Reserve, um, just off the A689 in the northeast of England near Durham. And we're just having a look at some wildlife and what have you. <coughs> and there's a nice river here. But this has been um, quite devastated by the looks of it from the flooding that we've had. Yeah, I've come down just to have a look at the river, see if we can find anything nice to take photos of. So we'll have a walk around. And I'll show you a few of the sights and what's about. And hopefully if I come across anything, we'll get some nice photos. So keep watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, all that usual stuff. I'll speak to you soon. Bye. As you can see from the little clip I've just posted, the river is in full flow. And we're going to do a bit of milky water, because why the hell not? So, set my camera up, um, and then I'll try and talk you through some of the settings, and let's see if we can get um, something nice. The sky's not playing ball, it's grey as hell. But no definition in it, but that's not a problem. We just won't include it. So there you go. So I'll set it up and then we'll have a look. So I'm now set up. Um, excuse the noise, but it, as you can see, it is in full, full flow. So what are my settings at the moment? Let's have a look. At the moment on F8, 180th of a second, ISO 100. Although it is telling me I can go lower. So I'm going to take that. It's all right. Can't really see much of definition there, really. Basically, my focus point is that rock. So that's what I'm focused on. I wouldn't say it was exactly centre. That's not far off though. So what do we have to do to try and get that to have a little bit of milky water? Well, you're not going to need a long exposure or a very long exposure. I think a second to do it. So let's see if we can manipulate the settings. Our three settings that we're going to move. So our f-stop, shutter speed, obviously, and ISO, um, or ISO, whichever way you want to pronounce it. So, get the info on. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my f-stop as far as I can go on the millimetre that I'm on, which is about 50. Again, as you can see, I'm on infinity focus, so I should be all right for focusing for that. So on F30, ISO 100, what's my shutter speed going to be? So, one-fifth of a second, so I'm going to take that. a little bit there so
Right, I'm going to try one second exposure. I know for a fact it's going to be overexposed, um, but we'll try it and see how overexposed it is. Well, it's definitely overexposed, but it's smoothing the water out quite nicely. So I'm going to half it. So I've gone from one second to half a second. I'm going to take that. It's not as overexposed and there is some milky waters there so that's not too bad what I'm going to do is I'm going to move just over here and get a shot on an angle to get more of it in um, and because I'm like shooting into the trees and there's no sky there it should be able to allow me to go on an even slow shutter speed now I have got my filters with me but I'm trying to show you that basically you can get milky waters without using any filters you've just got to process the image in Lightroom and that should be fine so anyway I'll move up there and we'll have another go so I've now moved down a tad my focus point is still that as you can see by the red dot on the screen and I'm still at half a second not too bad I'm going to knock it down levels are fine right I'm going to knock it down to what it's telling me I'm supposed to I'm only at f25 now I'm only at f25 now because basically I've come back out I've zoomed out So one fifth of a second, we'll take that. That's not too bad. I don't mind that. So there you go. Basically it is possible to do milky waters, whatever you want to call it, long exposure on waterfalls without a filter. It's just going to take post-processing or processing in Lightroom or whatever your um, photo editing software you use to bring it back because it will be overexposed. Now I'm going to move a bit further up, see if there's anything else about. I'll probably change back lenses and see if we can get a bit of wildlife. Seems we are at a nature reserve. Honest. So there you go. Well, there's a few snowdrops around, so you never know. I might do a few snowdrop shots. Or something like that. So I'll speak to you soon guys. So I've moved probably about 10 foot a bit further up. Still at the same place. But oh, let's have a look. This is what I'm taking the photo of now. So focus point is that rock settings I'm at half a second at F29 ISO 100 so so that doesn't look that bad to be totally honest it doesn't look overexposed as such but I'm still getting some nice nice milky water so that's not too bad I'm going to put it to what it's telling me because the bloody sun's coming out. I should be taking it out. And again, we're still getting a little bit of milky waters, but not much. Getting water on the camera, on my phone, but hey ho. <laughs> so there you go, guys. 
So we're gonna have a walk around. Um, took some photos and some white water, milky water for exposure. Um, I'm just gonna have a walk around now. See what else we can find. I put my leg, big lens back on because we'll do a bit of wildlife. So what do you need to know? What's your settings going to be in wildlife photography? Well, <laughs> that's a bone of contention right there. Some people think you can just tell you the settings and you can go out and take a photo. It doesn't work like that, unfortunately. I think out of all the pho photography you've got, wildlife is probably the hardest because wildlife is unpredictable for one and you could go out and spend all day, which I've done many a time, and took a photo of nothing. Or should I say, nothing interesting. Yes, I took photos of birds. But the only, the, the, only, the run of the mill stuff, stuff you get to take, you, got, you probably could take in your back garden. But if you don't get out, you're not going to be able to take them out. So my usual settings that I start with, and then as I need to take a photo, or as I move, or as something take, goes across from me, uh, f8. <coughs> I will go as low as f6.3, but that's the lowest I can go at full magnification on my camera. Sorry, on my lens. So f8 is what I usually start at. I have my auto ISO on because I'm using a D500 which allows me to do that and then basically I'll change my shutter speed depending on what it is if it's a static bird that's just sat there preening itself or just sat in the water then I'll bump the shutter speed down until my ISO looks about right and by right I mean no higher than two to three hundred 320 something like that and I know basically I can sort that out in Lightroom um, we're gonna have a walk around the reserve never know might end up somewhere else it's not a big reserve but it's a nice reserve when there's things to take photos of <coughs> there's plenty of grey like goose plenty of can of geese and lots and lots of little birds flitting around and like I said with all the rubbish well not rubbish but with this coronavirus COVID-19 whatever it's just nice to get out but we'll keep on going we'll have a walk around might do some more landscapes we'll just wait and see Isn't it strange? When you're walking around <coughs> and the sun comes out and you think to yourself <sighs> Well, I do. Sun's trying to get out which is always nice. A few patches of blue sky around. No doubt it'll open. Heavens will open and I'll get drenched now. But hey ho. I haven't seen much, there's people out looking for otters around here, but I haven't seen no. So I'll continue walking, you never know what we'll come across. I've heard a woodpecker in the trees around there, so you never know. If nothing, I'm out and about. Instead of listening to the news or the radio and all they're going on about is coronavirus and why people are buying a load of toilet rolls. No idea. Anyway, 